So the host tier one. The host tier one is, defines the universal technology agnostic component requirements to the hardware system. It is really what all the tier two standards need to make sure they incorporate all these um, component requirements defined in the tier one. So the tier one defines a few things and from a high level what the tier one does is defines this technology agnostic architecture, a computing embedded architecture that um, any type of uh, computing environment would need to contain. So that would be broken up into host components and logical elements and we'll go through each of these. So it establishes, the host architecture establishes these logical and physical domains and also adds in chassis management, which is kind of low level health management that a lot of electronics involve as well and standardizes on that as well. And it's, it's a hierarchical framework, so it can expand, you can apply different tier twos, different technologies to these, uh, tech, uh, to these architectures. So it's composed of the following, the host architecture is composed of the following elements. You have the logical domain, which are your chassis management, your resources, and your transmission interfaces. So these are all the things you need to encapsulate in a tier two. You need to be able to encapsulate these functionalities when you define a tier two technology. Then you have the physical domain. What are the actual form factors? What are the actual interfaces that are required? These are things that have to be defined as well. At this level, uh, there are no actual definitions. It's just saying these are, these are what are required in an embedded computing architecture. So at a very high level, this is just defining a computing environment will have some type of chassis. Um, it'll have a bunch of modules that all need to contain resources, they'll need to contain chassis management, and they'll have to communicate in some way. But how these things are done is defined at the tier two level. So what do we mean by the resources? The functional resources, they perform the main function of the system. That could be some kind of processing, some kind of graphics processing, uh, radar processing, something like that. Uh, power supply resource, that's how you transform your platform power into the power that's needed by your modules inside the system. And then chassis management, that's some way to do module and chassis level health and status monitoring within your system. We also have the host components. And so these all fit together. These are the interfaces that need to make sure are defined within the tier two standard. You need to define the enclosure, how do the modules fit into the enclosure, potentially what does the enclosure look like, the transmission components, how are things connected together? Is it wires, is it a PCV? The external interface, you may want to even define how, does, how do signals come in and out of your system? And the modules as well, what do those look like? What are those interfaces to the back plane? that type of thing. And as we went those before, um, the host enclosure is the housing for the different modules and different um, transmission components. The modules are actually where you're putting the resources, the functional resources, and creating that uh, modularity between them. Uh, the transmission components, like I said, are the backplane or wires that um, you send data between to get between each different module. And an external interface is an interface between the platform and the system. There's also the logical entities, and, and one is the resources. So as we, we list, we claim functional resources at the tier one level, just saying that your tier two needs to enable the use of these different functional resources. Some examples are general processing, I.O. processing, image processing, or data storage, and also the power supply as a functional resource as well. And these all need to be enclosed within this black box or encapsulated within these modules. And then chassis management. Um, host tier one also mentions and says that a tier two needs to define some type of chassis management architecture. And what chassis manager does is it establishes an autonomous subsystem that provides application independent hardware management. So this is independent from your main processing applications and is able to monitor the health and status at the module level, so each individual module at the chassis level to give a single aggregator for all the different modules 
and even potentially across different chassis as well. And the inclusion of the standards just to make sure that when a tier two is developed, uh, you make sure that you implement a standardized way to do chassis management. Another logical entity is a transmission interfaces. This is not to be confused with the transmission components. The transmission components are more, you need a cable or a PCB, but what it doesn't define is the actual communication, uh, the protocols or the type of data that gets passed through between them. And so that's where the transmission interface comes in. And this is how do these uh, functional resources communicate with each other. So you have the multiple transmission interfaces. One is a system communication. So all embedded computing platforms need a way for general communication to go between different resources. And this is split up from platform I.O. And this is an important concept because we don't want platform I.O. to go between different modules because that's really where um, vendor lock and non-standard interfaces can be contained in the platform I.O. So that's why we have things split up into different transmission interfaces, or that's one reason why. There's also chassis management. You need to define the way to connect these chassis management entities together to facilitate the chassis management utility capabilities as we've defined previously. One thing to note is that these can potentially share the same physical medium. You just need to make sure you're uh, the tier two is covering the ability to do these, these type of things, these communications. And then there's a system I.O. transmission interface. This is how, does, how do you interface with some of the specific um, platform discretes, for instance? How do you get those to the different modules within your system? What this doesn't do is it doesn't carry the communication between the two. It's more how does how does your system communicate with the external I.O.? And then we also have a specific interface for the interface between the outside world, such as the platform, and then your system. This could be a front panel, for instance, or a, um, the wires from the front panel to a back plane, that type of thing. And just to make sure that you're, you're able to get these signals into your system. And finally, you need a way to trans transmit power from, not only convert the power, but then transmit it to your system with the different uh, entities. So the SPDI, the System Power Distribution Interface, that's what distributes power um, from the power supply modules to the different modules that require that power. And all this needs to be defined within a tier two core technology.